most of us aren't satisfied. Some days we just don't seem to get ahead fast enough. We're always trying to find new ways to see more, do more, have more. hurry to see a lot of the children. of us who now want more, there's that next generation we've created who'll demand newer and newer things as they grow up. Anyone whose job it is to serve the public has to plan ahead just to keep up. Just as keeping up with the demand for telephones is a challenge today, so it was in earlier days. Suppose this were your town many years ago, and you had had the job of setting up its first telephone system. You might think there wouldn't be much of a problem, just a matter of hooking people's telephones together with wires. So that, for example, Mr. Schmidt, the butcher, could talk to Mr. Burke, the banker. But just as soon as you'd connected the telephones of your first two customers, there'd be others to add to your telephone system. Mr. Ballard, the blacksmith, might want to talk to Mr. Burke. And Mrs. Garrity, at home, would have something to say to all of them. So to provide service for only four customers, you'd have already had to string up six lines. Word would soon get around about your new telephone system. The schoolmistress. The mayor. And the seamstress would want to talk to each other. Then everyone would want to talk to everyone else. Now you'd find yourself with 21 lines. Seven people, but 21 lines. As the demand for your telephones continued to grow, and each telephone had to be connected to every other telephone, by the time you'd grown to 10,000 customers, you'd have had a tangle of 50 million lines. That would blanket your town with wire. And you'd certainly find a way to simplify your system long before it got that way. That's what we did. We set up a central switching point which reduced the lines to one to a customer. And still allowed us to connect any telephone to any other telephone. 
this worked fine for a while. New numbers kept coming, old numbers were used more often. We hurried to keep ahead. We added new switchboards and more and more operators, but it wasn't enough. We continued to search for the answer. As the telephone numbers increased, the needs of the other telephone departments increased. We figured out that someday there wouldn't be enough girls in the entire country to handle the growing demand. So we asked ourselves, can we build a machine to do part of the work? Well, to handle telephone calls, it would have to be a machine that could make decisions. Is there such a device? Is there a piece of machinery that can make decisions? Yes. One of the simplest devices which takes definite action is an ordinary switch. Nothing is indecisive about a switch. It's either on or off. It says yes or no. It never says maybe. A switch that is operated by electricity is called a relay. Relays can be made to do surprising things. When we take many relays and wire them together, we call this a circuit. You can design a circuit to respond the way you want it to when you feed information into it. For instance, this circuit has been designed to recognize two situations. You get one result when you push buttons in a particular order. You get another result if you push the same buttons in the reverse order. So, if we break a problem down into a series of simple situations or decisions, and if, as we've seen, machinery can carry out decisions, then it should be possible to build a machine to do almost any job. For fun, let's imagine that there was need for a fantastic machine to do your shopping. A machine that could select, for instance, a particular pair of shoes from among all the shoes for sale in a store. You would build into the circuits of your machine information about the shoes. When you were ready, you'd feed into your machine instructions about the shoes you wanted. Woman's or man's. Size. Color. Heel. Style. Your machine would break the problem down into several simple decisions. It would first connect the circuits to all the women's shoes. Next, the machine would connect circuits only to the green shoes. Then to the size 6 green shoes. And finally, the size 6 green dress shoe with the 2-inch heel. Now 
Now, what about building a machine to find telephone numbers? A machine that will accurately connect any two telephone numbers from among the numbers of 50 million customers. What would such a machine have to do? Well, I find out what number is making the call. I find out what number is being called. I find the line that reaches that number. I find out if the number is free. I connect the calling number to the number being called. I remember the number in case I need it again. I make sure someone answers. I find out when they finish talking, and I disconnect their two numbers. Once again, a machine would have many decisions to make. To build it, you'd use many switches and relays, which would be fully automatic and keep costs down. Make them of precious metals for longer wear. Use the products of huge furnaces. Add the tiniest of mechanisms to make the machinery compact. And you'd have built, as we have, the largest computing system in the world today. The dial telephone switching system. And the person who operates all this is you. Here's a diagram of the computer you use. It looks complicated, and it is. Here's how it works. When you pick up the phone, the machine knows right away that a call is going to be made. It gets ready for the information you are about to give it. Like an operator, the machine must remember the information, so it brings in a circuit called the register. The machine connects the register to your telephone so it can record the numbers when you dial. Now the machine tells you it's ready. You hear a dial tone. Suppose you're calling a friend just around the corner whose number is circle 27799. You have information to give to the machine, just as you did when you used the shoe selector. When you dial this information, the number you're calling, into the machine, the register takes down the numbers. Now let's stop a moment. As soon as the first three numbers are received, the register asks the pre-translator if this is a local call. The pre-translator determines in a flash that it is while you continue to feed information into the machine. When you finish dialing, the register passes the numbers it has memorized to the completing marker. The marker is a sort of boss circuit that tells other circuits what to do. It can do many things at the same time without mistakes. First, it examines the numbers. And after looking at the first three, it recognizes that this call is not only local, but is going to a telephone that is connected to that very same office. Now, the marker reserves circuits it will need later on. And at the same time, calls in a sort of electronic telephone directory, which tells it just where in the office to locate the number you are calling. Now the marker checks to see if your friend's telephone is busy. It's free, so the marker connects that telephone to yours. And rings the bell. With all this to do, these big computers are fast. How fast? as fast as the world of today and the immediate world of tomorrow. <laughs>